You got two horses and a small cart. What do you do? This isn't a riddle. You live that merchant life, of course. Roaming between towns, buying low, selling high, just like a good merchant should. There are quests you can pick up too. No service too small for a bit of coin. By the way, if you think you've seen this game before, then you probably did. This Merchant Life has now exited early access. Their journey began in 2017, so that's a little over two years of working on the game. Anyway, there's three different modes you can play. Free play, which doesn't have any restrictions. This mode doesn't force you to do anything. Then there's payback mode. This one reminds me of Racketeer. Your father died leaving you with a mountain of debt that you need to pay back in timed intervals. So you need to gain more and more money. The intervals are long, but the amount jumps by a lot. The total sum owed? Half a million coins. That's gonna be difficult. The third mode is campaign. This is where you can play through a story. The game gives you objectives, and then when you reach them, the story moves along. For example, the first objective is to hit level 3, then you need to collect 6,000 gold, and then after that, you need to get your cart security to level 10. And the story is ridiculous. Most of it happens between you and your horses. I mean, they're probably the merchant's best friends, but they're not very helpful when coming up with decisions. They're horses. Campaign is the mode you will want to buy this merchant life for. It feels the most complete and integrates the mechanics well. Before you get started on any of those modes, you need to customize your game. Now this goes beyond choosing a difficulty, naming the horses, and setting the merchant's looks. You need to choose a background for the character. What they did before becoming a merchant. Choosing one gives you bonuses, like experience reward increases 50%, or combat mission rewards up 25%. Now this is on top of some general stat bonuses. It's nice to customize how you want to play or cover your weak spots. This also provides slightly different ways to play if you do a second playthrough. I need to point out that you must hit a switch in the game so it shows you exact percentages, which for a strategy game is a bit odd. Just show me the percentages. It's, it's useful every time. So since you're a merchant, you would imagine most of the gameplay is buying and selling goods. However, that's only part of it. Most of the time, the quests dictate what city you'll be traveling to. Pick up a chest here and take it over there. Go to this city, pick up some people, peasants, and bring them back. Completing those quests is guaranteed money, so it's hard to pass up. But picking up some goods when the price is low is a good idea. Then you can sell them when you find a town where it's worth it. Beware, there is a small tax you need to pay to take goods out of a town. Oh, oh, another beware for you. The cart moves slower the more you put in there, which makes sense. Oh, one last beware. With more goods, you're a bigger target for bandits. All of these are cool mechanics that keep you in check. It slows you down and forces you to upgrade your cart and keep more protection. Although, if you're like me, buying and selling goods is going to be difficult. I'm terrible at remembering the prices. I really should write it down. I buy wood at 14 coin, and then by the time I make it to the next town, I completely forget what I bought it at. So my strategy is to only buy when the price is green, which means it's at its lowest. At least I can sell it at the normal price and make a small profit. I do wish the game told me how much profit I made from a sale, and that way I could feel a greater sense of shame. All this talk of profit is nice, but this merchant life doesn't make it so easy. Besides having to repair your cart all the time, the roads can be problematic. Random events spring up and make it difficult. You're put into a situation and given a couple of options. Now these are not life or death, 
They can provide some quick coin and they do change some of your profile stats like compassion and culture. These come up all the time and on a second playthrough, I imagine will be tedious since you've seen them all and know the answers. There's also bandits and wolves on the roads. Of course, they're going to attack you and try and take your goods. That's why you need to keep a security detail. However, that doesn't come cheap. Depending on how powerful they are, the more money they expect. That only keeps them around for so long. If their morale drops low enough, then they'll quit. You can stop this by paying them more money. It's nice that you can set it to auto pay. Your security has to be carefully managed. Rush ahead and buy expensive people and the payments are gonna kill you. But if you don't have enough security, you'll lose your goods. If you are attacked, then there's a separate combat minigame. I'm having a heck of a time with it. It's a complicated pie grid system with multiple phases. As far as I'm concerned, way too complicated. When combat starts, it shows you where the enemies are going to enter. It could be more than one of these slices. Then you need to place your units into those spaces, but you're limited by the placement points. If your units have high placement points, you might not be able to place enough units. After placement, it's the movement phase where you can move units, that's expected. Useful to reinforce a different pie slice after you clear one. Then during the combat phase, dice rolls, decide if your defense holds or your attack succeeds. It's so abstract and the pie shape makes little sense. Having it more related to your cart with attack squares around it would have been better. I still don't think I understand how archers attack. So far I've worked out that you need a mix of different fighters, even with different skill levels. They might die, but they're expendable and more units will always be available at the next tavern. Better not to lose your goods. The combat is something you'll need to push through to play since there can be a lot of combat. There are quests to fight wolves on the road. Also, the more you have in your cart, the more appealing it is to bandits. Another issue is that later on when wolves become trivial, you still need to go through all the actions. The same wolf quests and the same meek bandits rule the roads. An auto resolve would have been nice. Placing units and going through all the motions is boring when you know you're going to win. Side note, the user interface is good. You can get to everything you need quickly with everything related to your travels on the left side. And the map is good too. I like when a game shows you where you're trying to go. The towns show exactly where you need to go for a quest. There's even pricing information. My issue is, is that I'm terrible about memorizing the map. Taking a quest caused me to jump back and forth multiple times so I can be efficient, grab the quest I can complete on the way to the other quests I have. Now, after you pass the early game, this merchant life is more concerned with reputation. As your reputation goes up, there's more to do at each town. More is unlocked. For example, doctors will be available to heal you. Money is still needed, but to get more reputation, like buying a house or building the town a library. The higher your reputation goes, the more difficult the roads get for you. Everyone wants to rob the popular merchant. Overall, this merchant life is fun, although I prefer the trading and merchanting more than the combat. Having three different modes definitely helps though, along with all that customization in the beginning. Perhaps I'll try once again with the combat bonuses to make up for my weaknesses.